एवरीवन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर ग्लोरी असोसिएट प्रोफेसर ऑफ फिजिक्स इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एरोनोटिकल इंजीनियर टूडे आर टॉपिक इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू क्वांटम मेकानिक्स सो इन दिस सेशन द टॉपिक्स टू बी कवर्ड इज what is mechanics classification of mechanics explanation about this mechanics importance of quantum mechanics so in all these mechanics we are going mainly to see about this quantum mechanics and then quantum mechanics and their developments that is what are the events step by step uh, year wise what are the developments have been done related to the quantum mechanics x black body radiation photoelectric effect compton effect and then lastly we can see that merits and demerits in classical and quantum mechanics let's see what is mechanics mechanics is the branch of physics that is concerned with the movement of physical objects so means that the mechanics which deals with the motion of the physical object when force is applied to objects it results in displacements so that is that there is a change in the position which is related to the surroundings what are the classifications classification of mechanics classification of mechanics explains the state of the object when it is in rest or it may be under the motion when some force acting on it classification of mechanics explains the state of the object when it is in rest or under motion when some force acting on it mechanics involves different types of properties like force acceleration distance work etc this is used to solve the realistic problems under different conditions so these mechanics is used to solve the realistic problems under different conditions as an engineer classification of mechanics is used by applying the principles and existed theories in real problems as an engineer classification of mechanics is used by applying the principles and existed theories in real problems so the mechanics is classified into three categories statistical mechanics classical mechanics and then quantum mechanics let's see uh, briefly about these three types of mechanics it's a first statistical mechanics so the word itself have static so the word static in statistical mechanics means that statistical there is a statistical in that that is involvement of static it means rest or stable so statistical mechanics deals with the objects which are in rest or in static position which the force is applied we apply statistical mechanics to solve the real problems a system for many particles so this statistical mechanics combines the principles of both classical and quantum mechanics means that it is not only a single system we are not talking about only about a, a single system if you are taking a system so this system consists of many number of particles so many number of particles are there in the system so uh, we are going to study about the uh, each particle about the each particle in that particular system so statistical mechanics provides answers to the thermodynamic demands that the entropy is maximum at equilibrium statistical mechanics helps us to determine how macroscopic properties so it determines us how macroscopic properties that is to say temperature and pressure or 
related to microscopic properties that keep on varying on an average. So statistical mechanics helps us to determine how microscopic properties, that is to say temperature and pressure are related to macroscopic properties that keep on varying on an average. Coming to the next mechanics, classical mechanics. Classical mechanics deals with the objects in motion under the influence of a force or the equilibrium bodies whose all forces are balanced. So the classical mechanics describes the motion of the macroscopic objects. When we are talking about the macroscopic objects, so it gives larger bodies. So for the larger bodies such as billiard balls to rockets, it can be described. Classical mechanics also called as Newton's mechanics. Newton's mechanics or as we can call it as Newtonian mechanics. So as the classical mechanics obeys the laws of Newton's so that this classical mechanics also called as Newton's mechanics. In Newtonian mechanics, the laws are written in terms of particle trajectories. So in Newtonian mechanics, the laws are written in terms of particle trajectories. When we are uh, talking about the term particle, so what is a particle? A particle is an indivisible mass point object that has variety of properties that can be measured. A particle is an indivisible mass point object that has a variety of properties that can be measured, which we call it as observables. So when we are talking about the observables, so an observable which specify the state of the particle by means of position and momentum. So the observables specify the state of the particle by means of position and momentum. When coming to the system, a system is a collection of particles which interact among themselves via internal forces and also external forces which are applying or uh, which are uh, facing from the outside world. Classical mechanics provides accurate results for larger bodies and having speed below the speed of light. Classical mechanics provides accurate results. So when we are talking about the larger bodies, it gives accurate results. So that larger bodies motion uh, should be below the speed of light. So the speed of light is 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second. So below this speed, if the larger body have below the speed of 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second, then the classical mechanics provides accurate results. So these uh, classical mechanics are simple and cannot be applied to small particles which are moving with very high speed velocity, high speeds, high speed motion. That is the particles which are in motion at very high speed, with very high speed. So we couldn't apply these classical mechanics. Next, coming to the uh, last one, the third one, quantum mechanics. Before going to the quantum mechanics, as we are going to talk in detail about these quantum mechanics, so why we need to do? So the third mechanics, which is quantum mechanics, we are going in detail clarification about the quantum mechanics. And so why we are going to see in detail what is the importance of quantum mechanics? So quantum mechanics has importance in photonics, nanotechnology, and we can able to know about the electronic structure in chemical compounds. And it is also have an important 
role in integrated circuits and lasers. So quantum mechanics has importance in photonics, nanotechnology, and also can able to know the structure of the chemical compound that is electronic structure of the chemical compounds and integrated circuits and also with the lasers. Quantum mechanics also important for understanding how individual atoms are joined to form by covalent bonds. Quantum mechanics also important for understanding how the individual atoms are joined to form molecules by covalent bonds. So the rise of all electronics is directly linked to our understanding of quantum mechanics. So what is the origin of quantum mechanics? So in 1900, a German theoretical physicist named as Max Planck, he published a paper. Max Planck published a paper. So this paper, that is, this paper formed a base for quantum mechanics. In 1900, a German physicist, Max Planck, published a paper. This formed a base for quantum mechanics. Max Planck is often called the father of quantum mechanics as he is the one who is the originator of the quantum mechanics. So according to Max Planck, the energy emitter is in the form of radiation. Energy emitter is in the form of radiation. This small energy E is equal to E2 minus E1. E2 minus E1. So the small unit of energy. We, would, uh, we said that energy emitted is in the form of radiation. So energy is emitting. So that energy, that small energy is uh, called as packets. So these packets called as quanta. So this small unit of energy called as a packets and these packets are called as quanta. A single quanta is called as quanta. Quantum mechanics is uh, the theory of science that studies the behavior of matter and light on the atomic and subatomic levels. Quantum mechanics is the theory of science that studies behavior of matter and light on the atomic and subatomic levels. So means that here we are going to see the discrete energy levels. Quantum mechanics is used to explain microscopic phenomena such as photon atom scattering and flow of the electrons in semiconductor. Quantum mechanics is used to explain microscopic phenomena. So this is the main one. Whereas in classical mechanics, we are talking about uh, Microscopic. So when coming to the quantum mechanics, we are talking about microscopic. So microscopic phenomena such as photon atom scattering and flow of the electrons in a semiconductor. So well, when we are talking about microscopic, so what is a, a microscopic particle range? So microscopic particles means the particle which have the order of 10 power minus 6 meters. A quantum mechanics is a collection of postulates based on huge number of experimental observations. Quantum mechanics is a collection of postulates based on a huge number of experimental observations. So, um, huge number of obs experimental observations means that you know, there are uh, more number of experiments that is uh, black body radiation, uh, Compton effect, uh, photoelectric effect photoelectric effect and quantum mechanics is a collection of postulates based on a huge number of experimental observations. Here the quantum mechanics is a collection of postulates based on a huge number of experimental observations. So huge number of experimental observations here uh, uh, there is uh, experimental ob observations which have been seen uh, in black body radiation a photoelectric effect, a Compton effect, so so many experimental observations are there. So uh, it is a 
collection of uh, postulates based on huge number of experimental observations. So, after 1900, what are the events happened in quantum mechanics? So, in 1900, so that is the origin of, uh, that is the period of origin of quantum mechanics. So, in 1900, Max Planck gave the Planck body radiation in 1905 photoelectric effect which was given by Albert Einstein. In 1911, discovery of the atomic nucleus E. Rutherford. In 1913, the model of hydrogen atom Neil Bohr. And in the 1923, the Compton effect A. Compton. 1923, the matter waves which was given by Louis de Broglie and 1925 the quantum picture came so that is given by E. Schrodinger and W. Heisenberg. Just we go through that what is black body radiation and what about the energy spectrum and all. So black body is a cavity. Black body is a cavity such as a metal box having with a small hole drilled on it and inner surface of the metal body is coated with black. So as you see in the picture, so the black body is a cavity. It is a cavity. So this uh, metal box having a small hole a small hole which is drilled on it and the inner surface is coated black. The inner surface is coated black. Then radiations enter it. When radiations entering into the metal box through this small hole, it gets reflected. So multiple Reflections have been went through in this metal box. So it gets reflections with the negligible chance to escape from the hole. So a black body acts as a perfect absorber. When a radiation entering into the small hole, there is a multiple reflections and there is a negligible chance to escape from this small hole. So, a black body acts as a perfect absorber. When heating the black body, what happens when heating the black body? When heating the black body at a given temperature, it would emit more radiations per unit area. So, how? In which way it would come? Through the small hole. So, when heating the black body at a given temperature, it would emit more radiations per unit area through this small hole. So, in this, uh, in this case, it acts as a perfect emitter. So, black body acts as a perfect absorber and also perfect emitter. Black body do not... Uh, necessarily look black. All of the light coming from your black body glowing out from within. The stars are pretty good black bodies since they are not very reflective. A perfect black body absorbs all kinds of radiations having different wavelengths incident on it. A perfect black body absorbs all kinds of radiations having different wavelengths instant on it and also it emits radiations of all wavelengths. So a perfect black body can absorb all kinds of uh, radiations having different wavelengths and also it can emit radiations of all wavelengths when comparing to the surroundings. When comparing to the surroundings if the temperature of the black body is higher than the surroundings, then emission of radiation is more than the absorption. When comparing to the surroundings, if the temperature of black body 
is higher than the surroundings, then the emission of radiation is more than it absorbs. So the heat radiation that is emitted by a black body is called the black body radiation. The heat radiation that is emitted by a black body is called the black body radiation. So when we see the energy spectrum of a black body radiation, so here the uh, spectrum we have drawn a wavelength versus intensity on x-axis have been taken a wavelength lambda and in y-axis intensity. So from the diagram there is an increase of uh, intensity with the temperature and a decrease of peak wavelength with the temperature. From the diagram there is increase of intensity with the temperature. So the temperature is increasing 3000 degree Kelvin, 4000 degree Kelvin, 5000 degree Kelvin, 6000 degree Kelvin. So increase of intensity. So here the intensity is increasing in this way and the temperature also increasing. So for uh, different uh, uh, spectrums we have uh, at a different uh, temperatures and there is a decrease of peak wavelength. So here the peak wavelength at the temperature 6000 degree Kelvin is more and when comparing to the lower temperature 5000 degree Kelvin there is a much decrease in the peak. So as you see in the 4000 degree Kelvin the peak is somewhat low comparing to the peak compared to the 5000 degree Kelvin. So that there is an increase of intensity with the temperature. So temperature also increasing, intensity increasing, with the temperature increasing, decrease of peak wavelength with the temperature. So there is a decrease in the peak wavelength that is lambda with the decrease of temperature. The area under each spectrum represents the total energy emitted at the particular temperature. So the area under each spectrum, so this is our the area under the spectrum so it gives the energy total energy emitted at that particular temperature means that at this particular temperature that is 3000 degree kelvin 3000 degree kelvin the energy emitted is calculated by this area by this area So, the area under each spectrum, it represents the total energy. So, it gives the total energy at uh, 3000 degree Kelvin. When we talk about the total energy at uh, 4000 degree Kelvin, the area which is under this, it gives the total energy emitted. Next, we go to the another effect, uh, photoelectric effect, another experiment, photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect is a phenomenon in which electrons are ejected from the surface of a metal when light is incident on it. These ejected electrons are called photoelectrons. So, there is a metal surface. There is a metal surface so in this metal surface light is incidenting so this is the light so light is incidenting so when the light is incident on the metal surface, metal surface, then electrons are ejected from 
the surface of a metal so what happens inside the metal why the electrons are ejected okay so the photoelectric effect is the phenomena in which electrons are ejected from the surface of a metal when light is incident on it these ejected electrons the electrons which are ejected from the metal surface called as uh, photoelectrons so photoelectrons ejected electrons are called photoelectrons when these uh, electrons are ejected when incident light falls that is when light is falls on the metal surface then the electrons are ejected from the metal surface these electrons ejected electrons called as photoelectrons the process through which photoelectrons are ejected from the surface of the metal due to the action of light is commonly referred to as photo emission the process is called as a photo emission the process through which photo photoelectrons are ejected from the surface of the metal due to action of light is commonly referred to as photo emission so this is the diagram how the photoelectric effect happens so this is the metal metal plate we are taking so in this metal plate there is a more number of electrons are there as you know that so metals have electrons so when the light is incident light is in the form of radiation so photons so photons so light radiation falls on the metal surface it ejects electrons it ejects electrons the photoelectric effect occurs because the electrons at the surface of the metal tend to absorb energy from the incident light and use it to overcome the attractive forces that bind them to the metallic nuclei so here uh, in the metal surface there are more number of atoms and these atoms what are the uh, valency electrons so um, they are uh, loosely bound with the atom these valency electrons are loosely bound with the atoms so when light is incident on the metal surface these valency electrons which are at the outermost orbit they will detach they will overcome the attractive forces inside the atoms uh, how it overcomes it gains some energy from the incident light so from the incident light the electrons gains some energy so that it overcomes attractive forces which is binding around them then the electrons come out from that metal surface photoelectric effect occurs because the electrons at the surface of the metal tend to absorb energy from the incident light and use it to overcome the attractive force that bind them to the metallic nuclei the photoelectric effect occurs because the electrons at the uh, surface of the metal tend to absorb energy from the incident light and use it to overcome this uh, attractive surf the photoelectric effect occurs because the electrons at the surface of the metal tend to absorb energy from the incident light and use it to overcome the attractive forces that bind them to the metallic nuclei so when the light is incident on the uh, metal surface the atoms have electrons so the electrons which are at outermost orbit so the valency electrons gains some energy and they will detach they will detach from the atom and it would come out from the surface of the metal so that the photoelectric effect occurs because the electrons at the surface gains some 
energy. So due to the gaining of energy, they overcome attractive forces that is bind with the metallic nuclei. So an illustration detailing the emission of photoelectrons as uh, a result of the photoelectric effect is provided here in the next slide. So here we can uh, uh, see clearly. So light can eject electrons from your metal, but only if its frequency is above your threshold frequency. So here in the photoelectric effect diagram, we have taken that potassium. So it requires two electron volts to eject an electron. So it potassium needs two electron volts to eject an electron. So it, if it overcomes these two electron volts, then only it can eject the electrons from the metal surface. So here the photon energy E is equals to H nu. So at 700 nanometers, so 1.77 electron volts, but uh, there is no uh, emission of uh, electrons here. There is no emission of electrons here. And at 550 nanometers, so it have 2.25 electron volts. So, which is above the required energy 2.0 electron volts. So, it is empty electrons. So, and coming to the, the third one, at 400 nanometers, 3.1 electron volts, here it emits electrons maximum. So at maximum, V maximum is equals to 6.22 into 10 power 5 meters per second. So light can eject electrons from a metal but only if its frequency is above a threshold frequency. So here when incident light is false, that is when the light is instant on the metal surface, on the metal surface, if the frequency is above the threshold frequency, then only it ejects the electrons. It ejects the electrons. If not, there is no ejection of electrons. So that's why comparing to at 700 nanometers, at 400 nanometers, there is an ejection of electrons, but no ejection of electrons at 700 nanometers. So classically for a light as a wave, its energy is proportional to the square of its amplitude. For a particle, energy is proportional to frequency. Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein in 1905 proposed that light has particle nature and also wave nature. So light is quantized, quantized, light is quantized. Next, go through the another experiment, Compton effect. So Compton state, uh, state that when a beam of x-rays is scattered by a substance of low atomic number, the scattered x-radiation consists of uh, two components one have same wavelength lambda naught and the other component has a slightly longer wavelength lambda dash. So when a beam of x-rays is scattered from a substance of low atomic number, the scattered x-radiation consists of two components. One component has same wavelength lambda naught and the other component has a slightly longer wavelength lambda dash. The change in wavelength of scattered x-rays is known as Compton shift. So this phenomenon is called Compton effect. So here the change, there is a same wavelength. One component have a same wavelength that is the lambda not have same wavelength.
and the lambda dash have slightly longer wave. So that means there is no modification in lambda naught, but there is a modification in the lambda dash. So in lambda naught is unchanged and the lambda dash is changed one. So that when a beam of X-rays is scattered by a substance of a low atomic number, the scattered X-ray radiation consists of two components. One component has the same wavelength lambda naught and the other component have the slighter longer wavelength lambda dash. So the change in two components, the change in wavelength is called as Compton shift. So this phenomenon is called the Compton effect. So the radiations of unchanged wavelength are called as unmodified radiations while the other radiations of longer wavelength are called as modified radiations. So as lambda naught uh, the component is have the same wavelength. So this we called as a unchanged wavelength that is unmodified radiations. And this one is the modified radiation. So the radiations of unchanged wavelength, the radiations of unchanged wavelength called as unmodified radiations while the other radiations of longer wavelength called as a modified radiations. Compton effect explained on the basis of quantum effect. The X radiation consists of quanta or photons having energy h nu e is equals to h nu these photons move with the velocity of light and obeys the law of conservation of energy and momentum so compton effect explained on the basis of quantum effect the x radiation consists of photons having energy h nu these photons move with the velocity of light and they obey the law of conservation of energy and momentum. When photon of energy h nu collides with the free electron which is at rest, the photon transfers some of its energy to the electron. This electron gains kinetic energy and it moves with the velocity v. Therefore, the scattered photon has a lower energy than that of the incident one. When a photon of energy h nu collides with the electron, so that electron is at rest. So when, when the radiation, that is when the photon collides with the electron which is at rest, then the photon transfers some of its energy to the electron. Now the electron gains some energy from the incident one. So it moves with velocity v. Therefore scattered photons has lower energy than that of the incident one. So here uh, we can clearly see uh, how uh, this Compton effect happens. So pictorial representation of Compton effect. So incident photon, this is the target electron which is at rest, recoil electron, scattered photon. So the wavelength of the incident photon is lambda i. The wavelength of the scattered photon is lambda f. So theta and phi. So theta is the angle of scattered photon, phi is the angle of recoil electron. So here the incident photon, the photon is going to hit 
the electron. So this electron is at rest. When it hits the electron, what happens? This electron gains some kinetic energy. This electrons gains some kinetic energy and it moves with velocity v. It moves with velocity v. And the scattered photon have longer wavelength lambda f. So here I'll explain the terms which we used here. Lambda i, it is the wavelength of the incident photon. Lambda f is the wavelength of the scattered photon. So theta is the angle of scattered photon radiation phi is the angle of recoil electron so photon is Incident on the electron, the electron is at rest. So when it hits the electron, what happens? The electron gains some energy. So because of gaining energy, it moves with velocity v. And coming to the next one, the scattered photon. So photon will be scattered with an angle theta and having longer wavelength. So here the difference between the scattered radiation and the incident photons gives the Compton shift that is lambda, delta lambda. So the difference between the wavelengths of incident photon and scattered photon gives the Compton shift which is Delta lambda. So delta lambda gives the Compton shift. So it is the difference between the wavelength of scattered photon and wavelength of incident photon. Here in this expression, lambda f minus lambda i is equals to Compton shift is equal to H by M naught C into 1 minus cos theta. H is the Planck's constant. M naught, why we are taking M naught? Because the electron is at rest mass of the electron which is at rest. Rest mass electron. So this expression gives the Compton shift, the value of the Compton shift. So here the intensity of scattered X-rays is measured for various scattered angles and the graph is plotted with intensity versus wavelength as uh, shown in figure. So intensities versus wavelength. So lambda naught as uh, 
previously i said that lambda not is the wavelength of the primary beam wavelength of incident photon so lambda dash is the wavelength of scattered photon so when uh, theta is equals to 0 degrees when theta is equals to 0 degrees there is no shift in the there is no shift when at a different angle theta is equals to 90 degrees there is a shift in the wavelength there is a shift in the wavelength so lambda if you are the two curves are there so this is the unmodified one this is the modified one so two components are there so the two curves refers that one is modified radiation another one is unmodified radiations and coming to the theta is equals to 45 degrees so there is a difference between lambda naught and lambda dash so while going to the theta is equals to 90 degrees let's see in the order This is 3 and this is 4. So at theta is equals to 0 degrees, there is no shift in the wavelength. And when theta is equals to 45 degrees, so there is a shift in the uh, wavelength. So there is a shift. So we can observe two peaks here. Two peaks here. So this one is the one component and this is another component. And while we are going to the third one, at theta is equals to 90 degrees. So there is a much difference in between lambda naught and lambda dash. And we go to the theta is equals to 135 degree angle. So then there is a much difference between the first and second components. So lambda naught, lambda dash. Here, the two peaks in the curve refers unmodified radiations and modified radiations. So this is unmodified radiation. And this peak refers modified radiation. So the difference between the two peaks on the wavelength gives the Compton shift. So here are the two peaks, the wavelengths of these two peaks are lambda dash, lambda naught. So lambda dash have longer wavelength and another one the same wavelength. So lambda dash minus lambda naught is equals to h by m naught c into 1 minus cos theta. So this gives formed and shift. This gives content shift to delta lambda. So the change in wavelength which is uh, delta lambda is equals to 0 0.0243 angstroms is good in a theoretical value. The delta lambda the change in wavelength delta lambda which we got is in good agreement with the theoretical value so that the this is experimentally verified and coming to the last topic last one uh, the merits and demerits so what are the merits and demerits in this classical and quantum mechanics so in classical uh, classical physics, it explains the phenomena. It explains the phenomena of interference and diffraction, which is related to propagation of light. 
So classical physics explains the phenomena of interference and also diffraction which are related to the propagation of light but it could not explain the absorption and emission of light. It could not explain about the absorption and emission of light. It fails to explain black body radiation and it, it, it fails to explain the black body radiation. And it fails to explain the stability of atoms. It fails to explain the stability of atoms. And also it could not explain the spectral series of hydrogen atoms. So while speaking with the classical physics, it talks about continuous energy. So that it couldn't explain the spectral series of hydrogen atoms. In quantum mechanics, it enables us to explain the photoelectric effect. It can explain the photoelectric effect and it explains the black body radiation. So means that it explains the absorption and emission of light which would not explain by the classical theory. It explains Compton effect and it explained clearly about the line spectrum. So as we are talking um, the, this classical physics it talks about the macroscopic particles which are uh, about the larger bodies and it has a uh, talk about this energy in continuous continuous energy. So while in this case in the quantum physics so it deals with the microscopic particle and we see that there is a discrete energy levels so that this quantum mechanics deals with uh, that is uh, it, the quantum mechanics the quantum mechanics deals with the objects microscopic one and it gives the energies or discrete so quantum mechanics is a collection of postulates which is provided by the experimental observations. Thank you. We shall meet in the another section with another topic. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.